Hi, good morning, everyone. This is Iyad Murtada, and on behalf of the IIA UAE, I would like to welcome you here today for our uh, first webinar in the online conference for the annual uh, regional audit conference here in Dubai. So today, our conf uh, our uh, topic is going to be really interested interesting related to managerial accounting. And before I start, I would like to thank our sponsors and our partners that made this, this uh, online conference happen. So today we are gonna have a really interesting topic related to managerial accounting. And this uh, presentation today is gonna be presented by uh, Mr. Karim Abdel Hay, he's the president of the IMA Dubai chapter, and by myself, which is, uh, I work at the same time uh, with the uh, IIA, or help them with many training sessions, and at the same time, I'm on the board of director of the IMA as VB for CMA. In, uh, in addition, I run a, a training company here in Dubai called Open Thinking, where we do different training for internal auditors. So here with me, Mr. Karim uh, uh, Abdel Hai, he, he's going to do the second half of the webinar, and I'm going to do the first half of the webinar. So when we think about managerial accounting, you know what? are the issues that we are facing as internal auditors. So when we go to do our job as internal auditors, what do we do usually? We go and conduct our routine job, right? We go, we try to provide assurance related to internal controls, related to operation, related to finance, financial operation, related to compliance. We are just trying to assure the management that all these processes are running effectively, that these processes are at the same time in compliance with all the rules and regulations and the procedures, and at the same time, and all the risk management processes are in place and we are trying always to adhere to everything inside the organization. But the critical issue here that when we go and we look at this assurance side, sometimes we go and we examine the process and the process is working, everything is fine. But actually this process is really not good process, right? You, you say they are really having the procedures, they are documenting the procedures and they are following the procedures. But these procedures are not effective. It's slowing down the operation. So what we need to do as internal auditors, we need to always think about the definition of internal auditing. And what is the definition of internal auditing? It's a process we are providing assurance and at the same time we are adding value. And the meaning of it, when with the, the idea of adding value, that we look at the process, we make sure the process is working, but at the same time we examine if this process is adding value to the organization. And in that case, we say maybe it's not adding value, why don't we provide an, a consulting engagement, provide an advice to the management related that uh, to this activity and say something like, you need to really work on this activity and improve it and do something about it. And managerial accounting skills will really help you because it will give you the idea about how can I really evaluate something inside the, uh, the organization and do my analysis based on the financial and non-financial information to provide some you know, valuable advice to the management. Our training today is based on this book called Managerial Accounting uh, Tools for Decision uh, for Business Decision Making. It's a really great book, and we, in this book we teach it here at Open Thinking. So we are going to get some ideas uh, from it. So when we start talking you know, about managerial accounting, and here I'm going to open the first question so you'll be able to to answer it. So let me just open the question. So please select your answer here. When we think about managerial accounting, what is managerial accounting? Is it governed by generally accepted accounting principles or it's placed emphasis on specific uh, uh, purpose information or it's, it's related to the entity as a whole or it's limited to cost data? Please provide your answer. Doesn't matter if you provide the correct answer or, or, or the wrong answer. Here we are just trying to get feedback from you understanding exactly what is your opinion related to managerial accounting from the auditing perspective. So when we think about managerial accounting, you know, what is the definition of managerial accounting? And here is the critical thing. You know, we need to understand when I'm doing managerial accounting, look, it's, it's two words, managerial and accounting. So first we are focusing on the accounting side. We want to get all the financial information and we need to see what are we doing related to revenue? What are we doing related to cost? What is, you know, the capital structure inside the organization? And after that, we need to understand what? We need to understand exactly what are the managerial processes, what are the decision makings that happen inside the organization based on this information, and how can I convert financial information into valuable reports and into valuable tools that I can use for management to be able to do better decision making. So this is really important. 
So as we can see, some of you said, you know, or most of you said that it's number one, it's governed by general accounting uh, principles, which is not the correct one. So the correct answer is B, which lays emphasis on specific purpose uh, information. So why, why most of you said that? Because you were thinking about financial accounting. You know, financial accounting is completely different than managerial accounting. Financial accounting is focusing on GAAP, which is a generally accepted accounting principles, while managerial accounting is just financial information inside the company that will help us on emphasizing on certain issues inside the company, on certain divisions, certain processes, and will be able to help us in making decisions. So if we go and look at the and, you know, differentiation between them, if we look at comparing managerial accounting with financial accounting, so we can see the first thing when we look at features, who are the primary user of the reports? We say for the financial accounting, they are the external users, shareholders, the creditors, banks, regulators, right? When you create these financial reports, which is you create the balance sheet, the income statement, all these financial reports, you are providing them to, to people outside the organization. So in that way, they will decide the situation, the financial credit of the uh, organization. They decide, you know, the, uh, the current situation. They see if the company is making profit or not. But when we are looking at managerial accounting, it's completely different uh, way, right? We are looking at what? We are looking at the internal users officers and managers we are looking at what's happening inside the organization so see this is really really critical to understand that inside the organization we need to make sure that uh, people inside the organization manager inside the organization employees they got this information and this will help them in making really decisions so this is really critical so this is when we look at financial accounting comparing with managerial accounting now the other thing types and frequency of reports so how often we have these reports? When we say about financial accounting, usually we have them every year annually or every quarter, right? Sometimes monthly basis. So we provide them to external users based on whatever requirements they need. While we, when we look at managerial accounting, it's an ongoing process. Sometimes we need to have the, these reports you know, every day for a certain divisions. Sometimes we need to provide them as needed. So in that case, it's based on the operation of the firm. It's not based on something outside the firm or regulatory basis or, you know, uh, uh, some other certain requirements. Now, when we look at the purpose of the report, what is the purpose of financial accounting? It's general purpose, right? It's just showing the financial condition of the firm, showing exactly the profit and loss of the firm. When we look at managerial accounting, no, here, here we are focusing on decision making. Think about a manager when he's trying to make a decision. Should I go and invest in China or not? So now at this point, he's, he's just collecting all this information based on you know, the market in China, based on their operation, on their strength, on their weaknesses, on the situation in general, after that, making their decision. So it's based on a specific decision that they are making. Or what if they are thinking about, should we keep our operation in, uh, in India or close it down? So see, they are always examining exactly specific decision related to specific area inside the organization, not over all the organization. Now, what is the content of the report? So when we say related to financial accounting, do you know it's focusing on what? It's focusing on the business as a whole. So we are looking at the whole business. And when we are preparing this uh, report, we are following the generally accepted accounting principles. So this is the critical thing here. Now, when we look at the managerial accounting, it's completely different. For managerial accounting, we are focusing on what? We are focusing on understanding exactly the subunits, the business that we are looking at, the division that we are looking at, and we are trying to, uh, to follow, you know, whatever standards that we believe it's relevant to the decision. So sometimes I'm not following the generally accepted standards. So I'm not following the accounting standards. Why? Because I'm using certain report, I'm doing uh, you know, analysis inside my organization to understand certain things. I'm trying to compare my, my variable, variable cost with my fixed cost. So I'm just doing internal analysis. There is no need for me to follow any standards other than whatever relevant to my decision making. So it's really important to focus on, on that. Now, when we look at the verification process, when you have the financial report, you need a, a, someone from outside the organization, an auditor, a CBA, to sign saying that this report is correct. While the managerial accounting reports inside the organization, it's just for internal use. There is no assurance. No one can say, okay, this is correct or not. So for you as internal auditor, 
most of, most likely you engage in some financial auditing so you were thinking about you know the financial accounting and you were dealing a little bit with financial accounting but when it comes to managerial accounting it's really important for you to say should, i should learn these skills so in that way when i am looking at an operation or when i'm looking at an internal financial report or uh, a risk management process i want to see if they were really using this information or getting the right information to make their decisions and at the same time, can we improve the, really the processes based on the financial information that we have in hand? So this is really critical for you as an auditor. Now, what happened in, in the, all around the world? Why are we now, you know, recovering from crisis? Or in some countries, we are facing crisis. So if you think about, you know, what happened in 2000, from 2000 to 2010, you know, all these companies they were making so much money you know if, if you remember in 2000 you know the internet started and everyone started you know thinking internet is going to make so much money and after that was well, th that was a big bubble and after that the market collapsed and after companies start saying okay we come up with new ideas uh, and new ventures are coming and if you can see you know in uh, the trend in the market everything was going up everything was good so when when you know they say when the, the money is coming no one will care but when the money will stop coming, everyone will start questioning, what should we do? So look at this cartoon, it's really nice. He's saying right here, of course, there is usually a little sign saying, keep your seat belt fastened and don't stand up in the car. And this is what happened. When all these companies are making so much money, at one point in time, many of these companies, they said, okay, we are making so much money, we are not going to care anymore. We are not going to care about our cost. We are not going to care about our, our processes. We are not going to care our, about our customers. Because they are going to come anyway. They are going to buy from us. We are going to make profit anyway. So because no one is caring about anything anymore, what happened? They didn't control their, they didn't control their cost. So in that way, their competitors, they were able to take over. They were not able to innovate. So in that way, they were are behind. And at the same time, they were not able to manage risk. So that, that caused them so much losses. So what you need to understand for you as an internal auditors, it's not just about coming making sure that the procedures are working risk management is in place and we have governance inside the organization we need to make sure that our organization are thinking and reinventing the way that they are operating inside the organization and making sure that they are working in an effective way comparing it with the competition or otherwise we they are not going to stay in the market think about kodak what's happening to kodak currently kodak is filing bankruptcy Kodak, the big company, now is out. What about Nokia? They were number one in, in mobiles, and now they are just, you know, losing money. So if you think about what happened to all these companies, they didn't listen to the market. They didn't pay attention. They were not co controlling three elements. And what are these three elements? I'm just going to quickly move to them and come back. So these three elements are related to quality, cost, and time. So first thing, they were not controlling quality. They say, okay, quality, we are good. The meaning of it, they were not paying in, uh, attention to innovation. Other companies, they are doing so many innovative things and they are improving their quality. And they, for them, they're saying, no, you know, our quality, we believe is good. Nokia said that our hardware is the core and software, we don't care about software. The, uh, what we care about is the hardware. For that, when all these companies start working on the software like Apple and like Samsung and like Android and they were leading the market by implementing software rather than hardware. Nokia went with what? With Windows 7, which is, you know, it was a disaster because, you know, who's going to use Windows 7 on mobiles other than in Nokia? So what you need to understand, you need to understand the quality. Is your company focusing on quality? It's not inside just the company. It's providing quality to the end user. So this is critical. And at the same time, what about cost? Your company, are they implementing procedures to cost, cut costs or not? You know, they can be working amazingly and doing amazing things, but their cost is higher than the competition. Think about all these American companies, where all these American companies, they went out of the market. And why did they uh, go out of the market? Because they were not able to compete with all these Japanese companies and Chinese companies, where these companies are providing similar quality with what? With lower prices. And they are doing that because they had lower cost. So in that way, if you don't control your cost as a company, this is, there is a big risk that you will not be able to stay. And what about time? When you go and do business with any company, you think about time. How long is it going to take you to go to the bank to withdraw money? Is it five minutes or half hour? 
What about going to Carrefour to buy some items? Is it going to take you at the same time one hour at the checkout point or five minutes? So if you don't understand and you don't help the management while you are doing your internal audit and telling them this process is amazing, but looks like customers are waiting so much or this process is amazing, but it looks like inside our organization, this process will take more than you know what's happening in the market companies will not be able to be fast enough to the market and in that way they are going to lose in, at the end so as you, as you can see there are so many issues that we need to look at and we need to examine because when we look at them from internal audit side we can say okay now i can add value to the organization while i'm examining their processes so let me just go back to the definition of managerial accounting and this is the new definition it's not the old definition that we have so managerial accounting is focusing the nature of it it's a measurement process see as internal auditors you like measurement right so it's a measurement process i am measuring am i cutting my costs in the appropriate way what about my pricing what about you know the cost structure that i have what about the financial structure that i have i'm measuring everything what about the performance of these of my divisions i'm trying to always have measures so that way i will understand if i'm doing good bad or i'm average and at the same time, the scope of these measures are related to financial information and operational information. So you mean like, what do you mean by financial and operation? Financial, am I making enough profit to cover my cost? What is my cost? What is my variable cost? What is my fixed cost? And operational information, how many units I'm selling to the market? How much market share I'm, I'm, I'm taking? What is you know, the, the time for me to deliver it to the customer? So I'm focusing on these two sides to make sure that I am doing good at them. I'm, I'm, I'm performing much better than the competition or I'm performing in really competitive way. Now, the purpose when we think about it is to help the organization in reaching its objectives. If you remember, what is the definition of internal auditing? We are trying to provide assurance and add value related to risk management, governance, and controls to make sure that the organization will achieve its objectives. And managerial accounting definitely will help you in helping the organization in achieving their objectives. And when we think about managerial accounting, we need to think about uh, two things. First, we need to think about, like we said, the quality, cost, and time. But at the same time, you need to think about something more than that. Because what if you say, please implement these procedures to improve quality, cost, and time, and everyone will implement it. And you go next year and you notice, okay, no one is using it. And you wonder why. How many companies, they implemented amazing technology, and after that, you go there and you like, Okay, you have this, we spend 1 million dirham on it and no one is doing anything about it. So what is the solution here? So what we are saying, management accounting information, which is the system to help you do this, is really important, but we need to have three elements with it. You need to have technical, which is to ensure that you know, the people who are performing this, they understand the system. You know, the people who are running this system, they should have the knowledge to understand how to run the system. How many companies they have all the system and when you go you speak with the people who are running the system they tell you well we, we we don't have a training so we don't know how to use this so technical is the first thing behavioral encourage action okay they know how to to use the system but they don't want to use it why because they they learned it in the old way they don't want to change so how can you reward them for following the system for implementing it in the new way and after that looking at the culture you know, you need to create a set of culture, you need to create a values, beliefs, you know, and link this with the organization and society. So th the idea here that they know how to use it and they, they want to use it, but they use it in the wrong way, right? Because it looks like the values and the norms and uh, saying, okay, let's do, let's take our old habits from the manual system to, the, uh, to this new technology and let's do the same thing. So we need to make sure that they know how to use it, they, they want to use it, and they use it in the right way. In that case, we will be able to improve our quality, cost, and time in, in, in the right way. So now when we look at managerial accounting today, the main focus is e evaluates operations in an in, in, uh, integrated fashion. So here we are looking at uh, you know, the operation and we are trying to improve it, but in, in a smart way. And use, uh, use both financial and non-financial measures. Like I said, it's not about just financial measures. We need to look at non-financial measures. And it's important to link performance with the overall objective. It's not about the, if my divisions in Sharjah or uh, Abu Dhabi, they are performing, but in Dubai, they are not doing well. 
It's about focusing on the performance over all the organization. I want to make sure that all my divisions are performing and all my divisions are uh, doing something. And if there is an issue, I need to understand why. So focusing on linking the performance with the, with the objective of the organization. Like I said, we focus on quality, cost, and time. And here, when we said the second thing, it's related to the technical, behavioral, and cultural issue. So these two triangles, you know, they focus on what you need to do for you to be able uh, to work as internal auditor and help the organization in achieving their object. So now we have another question for you. I'm just going to open it in a second so you'll be able to answer. Question number two. So please select your answer. And by the way, like I said, you need to select this answer because when, when you answer this question, we will give you the CBE credits. Otherwise, we will not know that you are with us live. So there is no wrong answer. Please just feel free to answer this. So what we are saying, the management of the organization performs several uh, broad functions. And they are A, B, C, D. So please select the appropriate answer that you see. Is it planning, directing, and selling? Is it directing, managing, and controlling? Planning, manufacturing, and controlling, or planning and directing? Let's see your answers. Perfect. All of you got it right. So it's about planning, directing, and controlling. This is, you know, what we do in, in the management. And as you can see, we said accounting, we focus on cost, we focus on review, we focus on financial and non-financial information. When it comes to management, what do we do? We focus on planning, directing, and controlling. And how can we plan? Well, you say, well, I need financial and non-financial information, right? I need, to, before I start my plan, to understand how many customers are going to buy, how much profit I'm going to generate, how much is my cost. So I need to start with budgeting and planning and forecasting. Directing. Okay, I want to direct this. Well, I'm going to understand my cost structure. You know, how can I have different scenarios? How can I make sure that I hire the right employees? How much salary I need to pay them? What, uh, what about their performance? Evaluating the performance of the division. So see, it's all about directing, making sure that I will be able to achieve the goals that I had in the planning stage. And after that, controlling, looking after the action happened and making sure that, you know, I achieve my objectives, and if I don't achieve my objective, uh, objectives, what are the gaps there? How can I understand exactly the variances and the reason for them so in that way I can prevent this in the future? And this is when we go and work with the organization and try to make sure, as an auditor, what we do. We try to make sure that they have the plans. We try to make sure that they have the process to implement it. And we try to make sure that they understand at the end of the period that if there are issues or, you know, risk areas that they didn't control that they need to control it next time so this is you know the, the, it's really important for us to understand that management they are doing this we are just there to support them to make sure that they are doing it now this is a really interesting case related to louis vuitton do you know louis vuitton ladies definitely they know this brand you know it's a, one of the most expensive you know bags for you to buy so Louis Vuitton, even they are really famous brand and they are really good. They notice that if they are not enough uh, uh, and they are not fast enough to the market, no one will buy them. So imagine you go to a Louis Vuitton and you would like to buy a certain bag, which is like $700, which is like, uh, if you think about it in UAE, about 3,000 dirhams. And you don't find this bag. Before, they said, okay, that's a fine practice. See, we are thinking about the old economy. You go, you don't find it. You, you pay for it and they will order it for you so you feel very special. But currently, customers, they don't like that. Currently, customers, they don't have time. They don't have the energy to just go and not find the product that they are looking for. So if your organization, Louis Vuitton, and if you operate in a way that you don't have enough inventory when the customer will come to buy your product, they are not going to come back again. They are going to go somewhere else and buy it. So what you need to understand from this example and this idea that you need to make sure that your organization is not just managing risk, is not having controls and having governance processes, is operating in an effective way so that way customers will come and buy from you so you, the organization will achieve the objectives. And this is something internal auditors need to start thinking about when they are speaking with the management. Saying, we want to make sure that you are working toward achieving the objective of the organization, not just following the compliance and risk and guidelines and everything and after that we don't achieve the performance that we want so performance is a critical issue and for us as internal auditors we want to make sure management are focusing on performance not just 
focusing on operation. See, there is a big difference. Operation, I'm focusing, I'm doing the job in the right way. But at the, at the same time, what about performance? See, this is really, really, really critical. So it's a really, I have a really nice example. They say usually in a surgery that the doctor did his best and the, the surgery was a big success, but the patient died, right? So this is what, what, what happened with many of these companies. They were doing everything in the right way, which is fine. But because they were not focusing on the result, which is, you know, the patient. So in that way, the, the operation was successful, but the patient died. So you need to make sure that your company is not going to be in that position. And at the same time, when you are working, you need to make sure that these people who are working in the accounting and financial world, you know, they have all these business ethics and they are performing in the right way. So employees, they should act ethically who are working in the financial sector. So when you are dealing with them, make sure that they are implementing good practices. Make sure that the organization, they have special code of ethics for these accountants to make sure that they are not violating you know, the accounting standards similar to what happened with WorldCom, Enron, and Tyco, and all these you know, big companies. Additional to that, you need to make sure that they have the appropriate incentives. If you go and look at you know, an accounting department, or if you go and look at operational department, and you see that the incentive is all based on pumping the numbers, on generating sales, on increasing these figures, so that way there is a big issue, because in that way all these managers are now motivated to play with the numbers, maybe in the right way or in, 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 in the illegal way, or an ethical way for them to be able to generate whatever reward and bonuses they need. So it's really important to make sure that there are controls in place and there are certain incentives to make sure that organization will, able, will be able to achieve their objectives, but in the right way. And recently, I just want to uh, like uh, speak about Sarbanes-Oxley, which is understanding that currently, because of these issues related to ethics, in many countries around the world, they are implementing Sarbanes-Oxley, not because it's required, but it's because a good practice. It's a good practice to make the chief audit executive and the chief of, uh, financial officer state and testify and certify that you know the financial operation and the controls there and everything is working appropriately. To make sure that they take responsibility of what's happening there and at the same time they influence you know this culture of control and ethical behavior inside their divisions. With that, I'm going to move you know, the session to Mr. Karim. He's going to go and explain to you some of the managerial accounting concepts that are critical for internal auditors to, to implement. And after that, we are going to go over questions and answers. So I'm just going to open now and, you know, uh, the questions for answer for you. If you have any questions, please write them down. And after that, uh, we are going to go over your questions. Please, Mr. Karim. Thanks, Iyad, for uh, inviting me to this uh, webinar. Um, which is like focusing on my favorite topic, the management accounting. Um, when we look into the management accounting, it's important to know, as he had mentioned, the purpose of the management accounting. You know, major purpose of the management accounting is to, to, to support the decisions, to have an informative uh, de decision for any of the management people. Anybody who would take a certain decision that would affect the business should have the needed information to take the right decision. And one of the very most, in, um, you know, critical decisions that a, a business may have um, could be things related to make or buy a product. You know, if we have different components of our products, let's say we are producing a, a bottle of water and, uh, you know, we want to decide whether we do the cap, we make it internally or we outsource it and buy it from external sources. This is a decision that we need to evaluate. Uh, another decision could be, um, you know, seller process, for example. Um, if we have certain products that we can uh, sell at certain point or process it further and sell it in a different shape and so on. There are different decisions that we are uh, going to quickly go through and, and see how we can take the right decision based on certain information. The main problem why the management accounting is focusing on these types of decisions is that um, given the uh, financial background that everybody's having, um, which is focusing on the financial accounting. In many cases, accountants do the wrong decisions and they rely on the uh, information related to the gap, related to the basics of the financial accounting, and they forget the business logic behind it. That's how we want to utilize the financial information in a different way analyze the information, the sources of the information to take the right decision instead of the 
normal decisions that we have. So I'm going to quickly go, um, go through the first type of decisions that we have, the make or buy decisions. So in a make or buy decision, uh, we usually say go focus on the relevant costs. When you analyze certain cost structure, it's very important to differentiate between variable and fixed costs. You know, quick recap, I'm sure everybody knows the difference between a variable and fixed cost, but just to, um, you know, recap, the, the variable cost is a cost that is going to increase by increasing the production. You know, the cost of the materials, the cost of the direct labor that work on the production. Um, the more you produce, the more you are going to pay this as a, as a variable cost. Whereas we have a fixed cost, which by nature does not change. Examples could be if you have um, depreciation expense. If you are using like a straight line depreciation, it's going to be rec recognized as an expense uh, every period, regardless of your production. Um, if you have a maintenance, you know, it's, it's something that could be portion of it variable. You know, we, you would spend more maintenance the more you produce. And another portion could be fixed where you anyway have to do a periodical uh, checks and maintenance for the machines regardless of the production and so on. So when we do this, uh, you know, differentiation, when we do this analysis, there is a portion which related to the fixed cost, which is going to be an allocation. So if, if I said as an example that we have um, a certain factory that is producing different products and one of the products, I have uh, the option to either produce pork of it or buy it ready-made outsource it. The cost as mentioned here in the example, I have a variable cost for making it of $10 and there is a fixed cost of $5. So the total cost of making this product is $15 compared to buying it or outsourcing it for $13. Then what should be our decision? What do you think? Should we buy this product or this piece of the product or we make it internally? You can write your uh, answer in the question and answer. What do you think? We, we will be able to see exactly what you wrote. What do you think? Should we make it or buy it based on these figures? We are waiting for your answers. So as we can see, you know, the variable cost is 10. And after that, the allocation of fixed cost is 5. So, so it's the total unit. If we make it, it will cost us 15. But if we buy it, it's 13. So if you are working with, with a purchasing you know, department and you are trying to help them in understanding what they should do, what kind of recommendation that you will have? The majority of the people when they when they face this, and I, I you know, one of the things that I, I give always to many of the accounts is this example, and the majority of the accountants would say, definitely go and buy. It's much cheaper to go and buy, you know. It's, it's something that by logic, we as, you know, having the financial accounting background, people who are, you know, used to see the financial reports would always compare the end result, which is the total cost of making versus buy. However, there are, these are not always the right decisions. Why? Because we have to analyze the cost of making it. When we did this, it, the allocation of the fixed cost. Now, my factory, if it's, if it's going to produce this space, there is an allocation of fixed cost. This fixed cost is what? It's, it's something related to the management of the factory, which is anyway going to be incurred, regardless of the production of this piece or not. So if this piece, let's say I'm talking about, um, you know, an LCD display in one of the, uh, you know, equipment. And this can cost me $15 to uh, make or buy it for $13. Now, the allocation of the fixed cost, the $5, is things that are anyway going to incur, regardless of your production or not. So I'm going to anyway still pay the same rent for the factory. I'm still pay the supervision cost. I'm still going to pay, you know, um, there are depreciation that are going to run on the majority of the factory, regardless of your production. And therefore, those allocation of fixed cost is what we call irrelevant information. It's an irrelevant cost. It doesn't affect my decision. So I have to eliminate the irrelevant information from my decision-making process. So here, actually, when I make the comparison, I should see if I, if I make this piece, I'll pay an additional $10, whether buying by, 
whether I, I continue, you know, on the allocation of the fixed cost or not, that's something irrelevant. My out-of-pocket additional money that I'm going to pay for producing this piece is going to be $10 versus buying it for $13. Now, the decision is totally going to be having a, a different result because the $10 is cheaper than buying it. So why I would buy it for $13 while I can make it for $10? So here we start to see how the perspective is going to change from a financial accountant to a managerial accountant. And that's how, as well, the internal auditors have to still look into these because making sure that the right decisions are taken within the organization is, is, is very important. We move to um, another example for a decision making uh, related to the management accountant, which is the disinvestment decisions. What do we mean by this investment? When we, the disinvestment is totally the opposite of an investment. So when we say an investment is, you know, starting a new uh, production line, starting a new operation, a new division, uh, a new branch. Uh, that's all an investment, right? While the disinvestment is totally the opposite. So I liquidate, I terminate. That's what's the disinvestment. So I stop a product that is already in, uh, in production or I terminate a production line or I liquidate a company. All of those are disinvestment decisions. So when we took into the disinvestment decisions, we again think about the marginal cost of a project which is the additional piece of it. So what is the marginal cost? I don't look into the total information. I go out of the um, thinking of a financial accounting into a managerial accounting. Let's take an example to apply this into. So if we said we have um, the information here, a company that has a production lines, one of the production lines, production line B, has the following information. It has sales of $3 million. It has variable costs of $2 million. It has an allocated fixed cost of $2 million. So this production line is incurring losses of $1 million per year. Now the management want to take a decision. Should it disinvest? Should it terminate this production line? Or still continue producing this product on production line B? Now when you try to do this, the majority, again, of the accounting heads would always say, we are losing money here. It's $1 million loss every year. Let's terminate it. There's no point of continuing the production with this production line. However, when you think using the management accounting um, you know, approach, the things are going to differ because you should not look into the fixed costs which are going to be incurred anyway. So here in this example, if the fixed cost is related to the you know, factory rent or supervision costs or things that are anyway going to be incurred, regardless of your production, then those $2 million are still going to be spent even if you terminate the production line. So this is an irrelevant information. So you have to exclude it from your analysis and just keep the relevant information. Now, if we focus on the sales and the variable cost, you will see that this production line is adding $1 million of margin. You have a contribution margin of $1 million. This is what we call the, the marginal analysis, how much of an additional revenue and additional cost this production line is getting you. So looking using those new eyes, you would realize that actually this, the terminating this production line is not going to be the right decision and keeping it is helping you in recovering some of your costs some of the allocated fixed expenses are going to be uh, are going to be um, uh, you know covered by having the marginal revenue that we would have one of the other things when you talk about this investment decisions as well is related to the considerations of capacity the considerations of the other, other utilization of funds. So when I say, if I disinvest, do I have, can I sell some of these machines? How much of additional money would I get regardless of how much of accounting loss would I incur on those machines? If this is a production line that selling it would cause a financial accounting loss because I'm selling it less than the book value I have for those machines, that should not be the effect of my decision. 
the effect of my decision is how much money I can generate out of it and how much I and how I can utilize this money that I, I used as the value of selling those machines in something else. If it can generate more than the $1 million annually, then it could be a good decision to disinvest. Or how I can change the operation of the production line to produce something else that is more profitable. All of those are things to think about out of the heads of the, um, the financial account. The third decision that we are going to talk about now is the sell or process decision. So in, in many of the industries, you have at certain points the option to sell the product or the output that you have or further process it and sell it in a different shape. So here I'm giving a, a, you know, a quick example. If we have a production line, let's say we are you know, producing dairy products and you can see what we call a joint cost. There is a, a cost that is an initial to come into a split off point. Let's say those joint costs are $2 million that we spend on the, the, the process of producing milk. And at the split off point, you have the option to sell the milk at $2.5 million. Now we have another option to further process this milk into other dairy products and sell it a different value. So let's say that we can further process this dairy products and spend an additional $2 million, to, you know, $1 million for each product and sell it for an additional revenue, sorry, for a total revenue of uh, $4.2 million. Now, I want to take a decision whether I sell it on the split off point or further process the milk and sell it as a different shapes or different products. Um, you know, at other certain points of the production. Now, when you do this type of analysis, you ignore how much of joint costs you had because this is, again, an irrelevant information. This is an information that you shouldn't rely on. Financial accountants would always look into the total cost. Now, this is, for me, is not going to affect the decision. It's not something that would help me in anything. What I need to compare with is how much of revenue I can get on the split off point, how much of additional cost I will spend to further process it, and how much of additional revenue I can get. So given this type of view, you would say that I can spend an additional $2 million to generate how much? I have a total new sales value of 4.2 compared to the 2.5. So I have $1.7 million of additional revenue. So by business thinking, you would say, I spend $2 million to get $1.7 million. It doesn't make any sense. It's better for me to sell it at the split off point. So this is how we should think and analyze the information that we have. Not think of it in terms of total cost, not think of it in terms of the financial uh, results in, in, an, in an income statement, but think of it in terms of a business decision using relevant information. One of the very important things that, you know, we always fall into whenever we have a, a financial background is we always evaluate decisions based on quantitative analysis. So the examples I all give now has a quantitative analysis related to it. How much of an additional cost? How much of additional revenue? How much of an additional profit will I get or additional loss uh, that I would incur? And that's in business is not always the right type of analysis. You have to consider other qualitative factors. What do I mean by qualitative factors? The qualitative factors are, you know, certain decisions may affect the behaviors, may affect the clients in a different manner that would have a financial impact later on. I cannot have a formula or an equation to calculate this right now. However, I may know that it may have a negative or a positive effect down the road. And therefore, I need to consider those type of qualitative factors. And there are so many um, uh, uh, qualitative factors that we can have in the business, but I've chosen like you know a few of them just to you know analyze the the effect of it the the first type could be you know regular customer learn of a special price given to another special customer so as an example if i said 
I have you know several clients on the business. They are going on. I'm selling at a certain price, and then I got a new client who is looking for a discounted price. This discounted price is still profitable for me, and I have an excess capacity. And I said, given the analysis I will do, I can sell this an additional um, uh, deal and have additional profit. And based on the quantitative analysis, it's a good deal. However, if I consider that this information might go to the other existing clients, they would ask for the same discount. And at that time, I may be losing a lot of money compared to what I'm gaining from the additional deal. So this is a qualitative analysis that I have to do. Another example could be in the disinvestment. Maybe one of the products is losing money and it's really you know, causing me losses. So if I, I give for an example, of if I'm producing, um, uh, let's say, shaving products, and I have a big brand for razors, and I'm very well known in this brand, and because of you know the popularity of the razors, I was able to sell you know shaving creams, um, you know aftershave gels, and so on. And those products are much more profitable than the razors. Actually, razors are causing me losses, but the other products are very profitable. One of the financial accountants may say, let's just terminate the razors production line and just continue on the other profitable products. However, this would be the quantitative analysis. The qualitative factors that has to be considered is, will I still continue selling the other profitable products if I lost the initial product, which is the razors, which is causing me this popular name? Probably not. So th these are our factors that I have to consider um, in relation to my decisions. A very important piece as well is the effect on employees' morale. And this is something that we have seen in many of the organizations. When they start looking into cutting costs and they do the analysis by numbers and they say, okay, we terminate you know, this number of employees because this would save us X money, you know, that's not always the right decision. Yes, it could be the right decision by numbers. However, when you consider how this would affect the employee's morale, it might be ending totally a different decision because, yes, you start terminating the low performance, low performers or people that do, do, do not add the needed quality to the business because you don't have an, a, a requirement right now for keeping those people. And then once the other employees feel that they are insecure, they start to uh, resign and, and leave and search for a different jobs and maybe join your competitors. You know, those are things that may end down the road being uh, very harmful for the organization. They don't think about the negative side of it. They just thought about the numbers initially. So trying to summarize all of this, there is definitely a lot of factors that we have to consider on the quantitative and qualitative side. It's not always the way that we look into given the income statement information or the um, the financial accounting information, there is definitely a business side of it that we have to consider to take the right decisions. Hopefully that was, um, you know, an informative part and um, I'll, I'll transfer it back to Iyad if he has any comment. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, write it in the questions and answers box. Okay, well, thank you very much, Karim, for this informative presentation. Uh, this is the end of our presentation for uh, for today.